Hi, in this video, I'll show how Leonard Euler, a Swiss mathematician from the 18th century, helped break the code and bring us the COVID vaccine. Now, the connection between Euler and the vaccine 300 years support is this. Euler invented graph theory. Graph theory makes gene sequencing possible. And gene sequencing gives us the COVID vaccine. You have all seen pictures of the coronavirus with protein spikes sticking out of it. For the COVID vaccine, researchers obtained the gene sequence of the virus and based on that, created a corresponding messenger RNA or mRNA. That mRNA is the vaccine. It tells our cells to create protein spikes just like those on the coronavirus. The presence of these protein spikes prompts our immune system to create antibodies to fight those spikes, thus helping defeat the virus if and when they come around. Now all this is only possible because of gene sequencing. And graph theory helps make gene sequencing possible. Hence, graph theory helps make the COVID vaccine. This video is organized in three parts. Part 1 introduces the basics of graph theory. Part 2 talks a little bit about genetics, and Part 3 will go into the important role that graph theory plays in gene sequencing. I will be putting the time markers for the three parts in the um, video description. Now let's get into Part 1, Basics of Graph Theory. The word graph here is not the same thing as in algebra, where you draw the graph of a function or of an equation. The word graph in graph theory is more like a network or a diagram of points called nodes or vertices, and their connections are represented by lines between them called edges. One common example of a graph is the subway map. It's almost never to scale, and almost all connections are simplified to straight lines, but it does represent all the stations and their connections. Now, given a graph, if you can walk around it and cover all vertices without jumping and without visiting the same vertex twice, it's called a Hamiltonian path, named after the Irish mathematician Sir William Rowan Hamilton. If you visit all the vertices exactly once and end at the same point you started with, then it's called a Hamiltonian circuit. So Hamiltonian refers to visiting all the vertices each exactly once. A path means you go from a starting point to an ending point. A circuit means you go around in a circle back to where you started. And either way, you don't get to jump. You have to go continuously. Another example. This graph has many possible Hamiltonian paths. Here's one. And here's another. This graph also has a Hamiltonian circuit. Note that we leave out a bunch of edges, but that's okay. Hamiltonian requires to cover the vertices, not the edges. Now, if you cover all the edges, without jumping and without tracing the same edge twice. That's called an Eulerian path, after Leonard Euler, who invented graph theory. If an Eulerian path starts and ends at the same point, it's an Eulerian circuit. This is like uh, the game where your friend draws a figure and challenges you to trace it without lifting your pencil and without going over the same line twice. Let's take that last graph. Here's an Eulerian path in it. Euler figured out when it is possible to trace a graph, meaning when there is an Eulerian path. If there is an Eulerian path, then other than the starting and ending points, any edge that comes into a vertex must go out using another edge. 
So each time there's one incoming and one outgoing edge equals two edges. That means the total edges at each vertex must be even. Except for the starting and ending points. The starting point has one extra outgoing edge, so it's an odd number of edges. The ending point has one extra incoming edge, so also odd number of edges. That gets us Euler's theorem. A graph has an Eulerian path if and only if, number one, there are exactly two vertices with an odd number of edges. They're the starting and ending points. All the rest of the vertices, they must have an even number of edges. For an Eulerian circuit, there are no starting or ending points, so all the vertices must have an even number of edges. Some graphs have edges that can only be traveled one way. That's called a directed graph. A directed graph or digraph is a graph where the edges have different directions and you can only go along that direction. You cannot go in the opposite direction. It's like a graph of one-way streets. A real-life example of a directed graph is a project network showing what tasks must be completed before you can start another that's waiting for them. In a project network, the workflow goes from left to right. It's not possible to go from right to left. In this example of a directed graph, there is an Eulerian path. However, it does not have a Hamiltonian path. Let's look at this graph. It has a Hamiltonian circuit. But it does not have an Eulerian path or circuit. Euler's theorem can be adjusted for directed graph using the same logic we had before. So a directed graph has an Eulerian circuit if and only if for each vertex, the number of incoming edges equals the number of outgoing edges. A directed graph has an Eulerian path if and only if for each vertex the number of incoming edges equals the number of outgoing edges except that there's a starting point where the number of outgoing edges is one more than the number of incoming edges and there's an ending point where the number of incoming edges is one more than the number of outgoing edges. Now, here's an important known fact about Hamiltonian and Eulerian paths and circuits. There is a fast algorithm to find an Eulerian path or circuit. It's called Hirchhauser's algorithm, and it has been known since 1873, named after the German mathematician Karl Hirchhauser. Whereas for a Hamiltonian path or circuit, there is not a known fast algorithm for finding one. That means that in real life, whenever possible, you want to model your application as an Eulerian problem and not a Hamiltonian problem. So in summary, we've gone through the definition of path, circuit, Hamiltonian, and Eulerian path and circuit. We've gone over Euler's theorem for the existence of an Eulerian path or circuit, and the fact that there is an efficient algorithm for finding one. Now let's switch gear and talk about genes. I'm no biologist, so what I say may be too simplistic, or naive, or even incorrect. But I'm hoping that even if I say something that's wrong biologically, it doesn't affect the math part. Please do leave a comment though if you find some mistake. Our genetic materials are DNA and RNA and they consist of a string of nucleobases twisted in a helix pattern. The nucleobases for DNA are abbreviated A, C, G, T, and for RNA are A, C, G, U. The branch of biology called gene sequencing is the science of writing down the exact listing of the thousands and thousands of nucleobases in the DNA or RNA in the order they appear in the organism. The way biologists do that is to chop up the RNA or DNA into pieces and use fluorescent stain on those bits and pieces to read them. That's why each result is called a read. 
The problem is we don't know where on the DNA or RNA that read is from. We don't have the ability to specify, oh, let's chop up from position 210 to 220 and read that. Nope, that's not possible. We read a bit of DNA or RNA, and whatever we get is what we get. So the way biologists solve this is to saturate the DNA or RNA sample with millions of reads to have a complete coverage with lots of overlaps. These are in the millions. When Chinese scientists did the sequencing of the coronavirus, they did something like 80 or 100 million reads. That's the order of magnitude we're talking about. Now let's go into the math of putting all the reads back together and where graph theory comes in. The key insight is this. The tail end or suffix of one read must overlap with the front end or prefix of the next one. And that's how we know they're neighbors. For example, if one read ends with AC, then we know its neighbor must be a read that starts with AC. It goes something like this. We have a read that ends with AC. We have other reads that start with GC, CU, AC, and another AC. Then the first two cannot be the neighbors to the right. Only the last two can possibly maybe be neighbors to the right. Well, how do we know which of the last two? We don't know. We put them both down as possibilities for now, and we keep going and finish all the tens or hundreds of millions of reads. Some of the possibilities will go nowhere. Some will get us to a combination that connects all 100 million reads together. That's a possible gene sequence. Let's do a small example manually. Suppose we have these reads. Let's see if we can put together the reads with their neighbors. Start with AGU. Its next neighbor can be either GUC or GUG, so we temporarily put them in. Next, CAG. Its next neighbor can only be AGU. We put CAG over here, overlapping with AGU. GUC can't have a neighbor to the right, so it looks like it ends here. GUG, its next neighbor is UGU. We add that on. And UGU, its next neighbor is either GUC or GUG. But GUG is already its neighbor to the left, so GUC has to be the neighbor to the right. So we move GUC here, we clean up the list, we combine the overlaps, and our answer is C-A-G-U-G-U-C. That's a lot of work and a bit of luck just to solve five reads. What happens when there are tens or hundreds of millions of reads? Scientists use graph theory. They model it so that each read is an edge. The resulting sequence must include all reads. That means it must include all edges. And a combination that includes all edges of a graph is an Eulerian path or circuit. And we know we can find an Eulerian path or circuit of a graph if it exists. So we set things up that way as a problem of finding an Eulerian path or circuit. Well, which is it, path or circuit? That answer is not coming from math. It comes from biology. If the DNA or RNA is known to be linear, meaning it has a beginning and an end, we look for an Eulerian path. If the DNA or RNA is circular, then our solution must also be circular, so it means we're looking for an Eulerian circuit. Let's walk through the complete method with an example. Suppose we know the RNA is circular. For example, scientists know the RNA of the coronavirus is circular. So we're looking for an Eulerian circuit. And suppose these are the reads. The plan of attack is this. Set up as a graph. 
where the nodes are all the prefixes and suffixes and the edges are all the reads. Then we look for an Eulerian circuit using the methods of graph theory. So step one, write down all the prefixes and suffixes in all the reads. In AUC, there's an AU and a UC. In AUA, there's another AU. Well, we already have it, so we don't write it down again. And there's a UA, and we write that down. Next, in CCG, there's a CC and CG. They're both new, so we write them both down. Next, in CAU, there's a CA. We write that down. And an AU, but we already have AU, so we don't write it down again. So we keep going. And we're done. This is the complete list of all prefixes and suffixes. Now step two. For each read, we connect from its prefix to its suffix. So the first read is AUC. That means we connect from AU to UC. So we have a directed edge that represents the AUC read. And we keep going. Here's the result. We have a directed graph where each edge represents a read. Now we use Euler's theorem to verify that this directed graph does have an Eulerian circuit. The theorem says we have a Eulerian circuit if and only if at each vertex the number of incoming edges equals the number of outgoing edges. So we check. The first one is good. It has two incoming and two outgoing. And we check the rest of them. All good. All right. Step three. Now that we know an Eulerian circuit exists, let's find it. We'll use Hirchhauser's algorithm. Basically, it says, first, find a circle, like this. Next, it says, if there's some vertex with uncurved edges, get a circle from that. So here, CC still has edges. Let's make a circle starting and ending at CC. And then we sort of add it on to the circle we already have. It's like adding on a detour onto the new circle. And then we keep continuing with any node that still has an open edge until we're done. Here, AU is still open, so we repeat the process with AU. We get this, and we add it onto our solution for one big circuit that covers everything. That's our solution. Step four. We write down the reads that go with the Eulerian circuit and combine the overlaps to get the gene sequence. Number one, the edge is AUC. Write that down. Number two is UCC, which combined with AUC gets us the sequence AUCC. And we continue with the rest of them. Here we go, we have our gene sequence. That's how graph theory solves COVID, by providing a way to do gene sequencing on tens of millions of reads quickly. Thanks, Euler, and thank you for watching. Hope that's been fun. Bye.